Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jim Snodgrass. Today we're going to look at a new racing frame. This is the Southeast FPV Ultralight. This is a super stiff frame. It uses really good carbon fiber. It's got chamfered edges goes together really nice with one tool. We're going to look at a kit, we're going to show you all the pieces that comes in it, and we're going to show you how it all goes together. We have instructions. We have the main carbon fiber plates. We have four arms, these are four millimeter each. The bottom plate is three millimeter. We have a top plate, this is two millimeter. These are some of the best parts of the kit. These are your arm plates. These are what you're gonna to use to attach the arms. The kit comes with one arm brace. I normally mount them one on the front. Um, you can mount one on the front and back if you'd like. Makes it even stiffer. The front one also helps a lot with camera protection. Get a nice battery pad. You have a TPU mount for a normal antenna. Some TPU mounts for micro cams. It comes with 20 millimeter standoffs and all your hardware. Also get a battery strap. So this is our kit. So what you're going to do is you're going to find this one silver washer. Then it also comes with this one stainless steel. You're going to put that in the washer. You're going to put that through one of the holes of your arm plates. Then you're going to take one of these press nuts and your hand screw it down on. It doesn't matter which side. Take your driver, bring it all the way down flush, then you just slowly tighten it up. So the press nut is seated. Then you just screw it out. And just continue this. You'll have eight of these, four on each plate. The only thing you need to make sure you do is put them all on the same side. So all four, make sure they all go on the same side. This is the longest part of putting together the frame, but this is also the most beneficial part. All right, so that part's done. All right, so the next part is gonna be taking these arms, Put them on the bottom plate with these arm plates. The long ones are going to go on the outsides, the shorter ones are going to go on the inside. You take one arm and you slide it down, the other arm, slide it down, they'll meet together in the middle. So, take your top plate and you'll just start screwing each of these screws. When you're putting this together, uh, your final time, or maybe even this time if you want to, if you're not just uh, test fitting it together, um, put a little bit of blue lock tight on there and that'll help keep those uh, screws from coming loose. There's one set of arms. We'll do the same thing with the other side. Let's grab our long screws on the outside. 
Four screws in the middle. With your arms, with your third nub facing forward or back, depending on what side you're working on. plate on here. Again, uh, you should put some blue Loctite on them on your final assembly to keep them from coming loose. So that's your main part of your frame. Ready to go. Top plate on, so you simply take the longer screws and you go ahead and put your standoffs that onto those. All right, if you look where the screws are, the holes are in the middle here. We have the 30 by 30 for the normal stack, we also have 20 by 20 mounting holes for the smaller stack. The stack's going to go towards the back, the camera's going to go up here in the extra space in the front. So we can take your TPU mounts for your camera, and those just slide right over the standoffs. Then you have the TPU mount for antenna. It's got a little bit of an angle to it. You want to make sure when you put it on that the angle is pointing down. That way it goes beneath the prop line and keeps your antenna from hitting your props. And you have four more short four screws in the bag. The rest of those four go to a hole on your top plate. There you go. You have a battery pad. You put it on the bottom. Stick that on there. And there's your finished frame with the top plate. When you want to put on the arm braces, they're going to go across just like this and they'll use the motor screws to hold on. Since these are four millimeter arms, you'll want six millimeter screws for the motors normally. When you add the arm braces, you'll want a nine or a 10 millimeter screw to hold your motors on. It comes with one brace. You can buy extras for $8 each. You can buy additional arms for $7 for two of them. Base plates are $18. Top plates are $13. The kit, as you see it, is $49.99. One of the special things about this frame is carbon fiber. All the frame pieces are made with Torre carbon fiber, which is the highest quality carbon fiber available. They use standard weave matte finish with a 0.5 millimeter chamfered edge on all the parts except for the arm plates. There are various TPU accessories available. Um, one thing I don't have here are the arm bumpers. There are arm bumpers for soft motor mounts and to protect your ends and your arms better. Those will be available for AIM 3D and Phoenix3D.com. We also have multiple canopy options. This is the Sprint Champ Canopy. One of our team racers, Ricardo Champino Samuel. This is his uh, preferred canopy. He wanted to keep a camera mount low and a stack low. This is what we refer to as the original canopy. It's a micro camera. Has a slot for a direct connect antenna with a zip tie. Hold it in there. Underneath, there's a spot to zip tie a small VTX like a Unify. If you have special needs for these, you can contact us. We have multiple versions that we've went through. We may have another one that meets your needs. Uh, for example, I have a custom one that I run that fits a mini Predator camera. See this here? Has a mini Predator camera in there. Very similar to this one, just with the larger camera mount and a larger opening for the bigger lens. I plan on testing out the Micro Eagle soon, so we'll definitely have a canopy that will fit a Micro Eagle as well that we're gonna work on. Uh, the only damage I've personally done to any of the frames that I've tested, I've got a couple more other than this, um, is just this weekend testing on the regional qualifier course. Uh, full throttle into one of the flagpoles. I have a small chip out of the arm brace. This is actually an early prototype arm brace that doesn't have the chamfers. 
Uh, the chamfer probably would have kept that from chipping off, but otherwise it's still stable, it's still solid, the frame's still stiff. Uh, full throttle didn't damage the camera. Normally that would have cracked your camera lens. This protected the camera, protected the quad itself, kept on flying. I've been racing these frames uh, for several months now. We've been testing these and iterating on those. Uh, in that time, um, got a Floss 2. This was an early inspiration, as well as the Ghost, which we uh, also have a few of. Uh, both that one and the Ghost had some things that we just uh, didn't like while we were building it, so those were the inspiration for us to build our own that had the features that we wanted, uh, specifically um, the arms being easier to change and being more solid uh, so they didn't come loose. Also picked up a Proton this year. I've been testing this. Um, it, I like the Proton a lot. It's not as agile as the Ultralight, um, so it depends on what kind of flying you like to do. Uh, the Proton does fly really good, it's smooth, um, but it's a little bit heavier and it's not quite as agile. Uh, the Ultralight is super agile, uh, just super, super tight, all handling. Really good handling frame. So I want to thank you for joining me for this uh, overview of the Southeast FPV Ultralight. I hope you like the frame. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below or contact us on any social media websites and we'll be uh, happy to answer anything you got. Until next time, I hope you get out there and fly. Most importantly, have fun.